Hey everybody, welcome back to Jimmy and his promo, and today we're going to talk about the Galaxy S23 series. We're going to talk about the S23, the S23 Plus, and the S23 Ultra. We're going to talk about which one is the best for you. Is it worth upgrading? We're going to talk about all the colors. We're going to talk about the screen. We'll talk about all of the cameras. We'll talk about the miscellaneous features. We'll talk about memory and storage, battery, charging, everything in between, and also a few things that many blogs and YouTubers have not talked about just yet. When it does come down to considering which one is best for you. Now, I do have a link below the video inside the description as well as a pinned comment that will give you exclusive savings on the Samsung website when you pre-order. So this way, if you like to save a additional $50 with a Samsung credit, which will bring you all the way up to $150 Samsung credit, click the link below the video inside the description. If you go directly to the website, you will not get that additional $50 on top of everything else that they have for the pre-order promotion. So let's first talk about all of the colors that are available. So these four colors are available for all three sizes. So you can go with the green, green, lavender, phantom black, or cream. There are four additional colors that are exclusive colors that are on samsung.com, which is graphite, sky blue, lime, as well as red. Now heading over into the screen sizes of all three, the Galaxy S23, which is the base model, is a 6.1 inch full HD display. That one is a flat screen with 120 hertz adaptive refresh rate. The Galaxy S23 Plus is a 6.6 inch AMOLED 2X Infinity display. That one's also a full HD plus as well. Again, a flat screen with 120 adaptive refresh rate, but the Galaxy S23 Ultra is a 6.8 inch dynamic AMOLED 2X Infinity Quad HD plus edge screen. So this one will be slightly curved, even though it is a 30% less curve than the Galaxy S22 Ultra. This one will also support the 120 hertz adaptive refresh rate. And this one has the highest PPI. This one's at 500 PPI. Now, all three of these devices, when it comes down to the screen brightness, will have the max screen brightness, which is a outdoor peak of 1,750 nit. Now, taking a look at the main cameras. So for the wide camera, you will have a 50 megapixel wide camera on both the S23 and the S23 Plus, but on the S23 Ultra, it will be a 200 megapixel optical image stabilization laser autofocus uh, with an aperture of f1.7. So if you're looking for the best camera out of all three of them, it will be sitting on the Galaxy S23 Ultra. For the ultra wide, all three of them are the exact same when it comes down to ultra wide. So they're all three at that 12 megapixel with aperture of 2.2. Now when it comes down to the telephoto lens, all three of them are pretty much the exact same. It will have a 10 megapixel. Uh, also, the aperture is f2.4 on all three of these devices, but there's just a little bit more that goes into uh, the Galaxy S23 Ultra in terms of the full breakdown. When it comes down to the zoom, you will be able to have the same zoom on the Galaxy S23 and the S23 Plus. It's a three time optical zoom that is a 30x space zoom. When it comes down to the S23 Ultra, you'll have that same 3x, 10x optical, but all the way up to that 100x space zoom. Now talking about the video portion of the camera, now all three of these can do the same thing when it comes down to 8K at 30 frames per second, which is a pretty big deal. It used to be 8K at 24 frames per second. Now you're also able to do 4K at 60 frames per second. Uh, you can also do the 120 frames per second at full HD. And then for your super slow-mo, it'll be at 960 frames per second. Now, when it comes down to the selfie cameras, when it comes down to taking a photo, you will have a 12 megapixel across all three of them, along with the video. And this is pretty big too, with the selfie video camera, you're able to do 4K at 60 frames per second. Now this is where it kind of gets interesting when it comes down to the memory and the storage. So if you go with the regular base Galaxy S23, they have an option of eight gig of RAM with 128 gigs of internal storage or eight gig of RAM with 256 gigs of storage. Now this is where it gets very, very important on which one you choose. And this is why it's important if you were to pre-order right now, and you wanna go for that 128 gig of internal storage, you'll automatically be bumped up to 256. Now you wanna make sure you get that 256 because if you get the base Galaxy S23 with 128 gigs of internal storage, you're actually having your phone be slower than anybody else who owns an S23 
with the 256. What I mean by that is that the 128 gig of internal storage comes with the universal flash storage, so UFS, of 3.1. All of the other variants of the S23, which will have 256 gigs of internal storage, they will all have the UFS 4.0. What that means is that if you get the base Galaxy S23, with 128 gigs of internal storage, basically after this pre-order is finished, your, your phone is going to open applications slower and you won't have as, as, as stable of an experience. So really the read and the write on a UFS 3.1 is half the speed than, you, than the 4.0. So if you are considering the Galaxy S23, the smallest based version, especially the 128, I would suggest to not get the 128. You will open your application slower, and as well, it won't be as stable as all the other variants of the S23. So again, always look for 256 or above when it comes to internal storage. So now that we got that out of the way, for the Galaxy S23 Plus, you will be able to get 8 gigs of RAM with 256 gigs of storage, or the 8 gigs of RAM with 512. Uh, if you go for the Galaxy S23 Ultra, you'll get 8 gig of RAM with 256 gigs of internal storage, or if you were to go up, you're going to get 12 gig of RAM with 512 gigabytes or that 12 gig of RAM with one terabyte. Really kind of depends on which one you're looking for. Again, the pre-order deal is where you're able to get double the storage. Now, the battery sizes of all three, the Galaxy S23 is at a 3,900 milliamp hour battery. The S23 Plus is at 4,700 milliamp hour battery. And the S23 Ultra is 5,000 milliamp hour battery. Now, when it comes down to charging, if you were to charge it wired and you plug in, the S23 will only charge at super fast charging. But if you get the Galaxy S23 Plus or the S23 Ultra, it'll have the super fast charging 2.0. When it comes down to wireless, they all support fast wireless charging 2.0, and they also all support the wireless power share. And then lastly that I want to talk about is going to be the biometrics. So when it comes down to biometrics, all three devices will have the ultrasonic fingerprint reader as well as face recognition. So now let's talk about some of the miscellaneous things that you could have missed from Unpacked. So first off, again, amazing camera work. So this way you're able to do astrophotography. There's also multiple exposures that you can choose from. You're also able to use Expert Raw, which is now built into the camera. So this way you don't have to go to the Galaxy Store to download Expert Raw. Now, if you do use Expert Raw and you want to uh, edit some of those photos, you're actually going to be using Lightroom. And so that's one of the applications you can also get right now from Samsung off the Galaxy Store. But again, that's one of those default options with Expert Raw. And there's also a new photo remaster tool, which I haven't played with just yet. Also, the Samsung Notes has a co-creation option. So this way you can co-create with multiple people with inside of your Samsung Notes. Also, remember, there is five years of updates with these devices, as well as four year updates with Samsung. Samsung One UI. And then going along with that Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy, the processor, there's a couple things added in there. One of them is called Advanced Vision Booster. So there's three levels of boost when it comes down to the screen. So it kind of depends on where you're located, if you're indoors or outdoors, along with enhanced comfort. So now going through the three devices on which one is best for you and is it also worth the upgrade. So first off, if you're somebody with a little bit smaller hands, you like something a little bit more compact, you can definitely go with that Galaxy S23, it's a 6.1 inch display, but just make sure you stay away from the 128 gigs of internal storage. Always go for the 256, so your phone will be a little bit quicker when it comes down to opening and closing applications and you'll have a better, more stable experience. If you want something kind of middle of the road, you don't really care about all the bells and whistles, uh, you can go with the Galaxy S23 Plus. It's a 6.6 .6 inch display, so it's fairly large and it's also a flat display. Um, but if you want all the bells and whistles, you want the best camera that's on the market, definitely go for the Galaxy S23 Ultra. It's a 6.6 8 inch display. You're going to have the quad HD plus display along with it slightly curved and also the biggest battery at five milliamps. You can have that 12 gig of RAM and going all the way up to 512 of internal storage or the one terabyte. Now, is it worth the upgrade? It kind of depends on which device you have. If you have any of the Galaxy S22 series devices, it's probably not really worth the upgrade. Some of the stuff that the S23 offers when it comes down to some of the software will move over to the S23 series whenever the Samsung One UI 5.1 gets released. Now, if you have any phone before that, like especially the Galaxy S20 or even the S21, if you have anything like those or older, you'll be able to find a big increase when it comes down to the upgrade for the Galaxy S23 series, especially if you have a Note series, maybe the Note 8, Note 9, or Note 10. 
Again, if you love your S Pen, go for the Galaxy S23 Ultra. You're going to see a big increase, especially from those devices as well, as they are much older. So again, anything that's about two, three, four, five years old, you'll see a difference. If you own the Galaxy S22 series, it's up to you if you want to have the latest and greatest, and also if you want to have a trade-in value. Uh, of what your S22 is. But hopefully you guys appreciated this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe on the very bottom left hand side. And if you like this video, then you also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.